Here I have completed the basic dimensioning of the saddle nut. In this instance, the saddle nut is one and three eighths inches long by one quarter inch high by one quarter inch deep. That is to allow for shaping of the saddle nut to the curvature of the top plate. Place a center line on the saddle nut. Line that line up with the center line of the butt joint. And then with a lead pencil, lightly mark the edge of the plate just inside the edge of the saddle nut. This is the cut position for the saddle nut. Using your knife, cut this area away from the purfling. Then remove that section of purfling and start test fitting the nut. The nut should actually fit snug, but not so tight as to when the plate expands, it will crack the plate. Because the nut will not expand as fast as the top plate or the sides. I have now completed cutting the area above the end block where the saddle nut will mount. I will glue this in place and then trim the outside edge of the saddle nut to match the curvature of the top plate. I will bevel the bottom side of the saddle nut to blend in with the top plate. While the glue is setting up, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the end pin for installation. First I take and put a score around the end pin just below the collar. Not a very deep score, but just enough to break the fiber of the wood so that when I use the peg shaper on the end pin it will not tear out the shoulder of the uh, end pin. And then I start in the peg shaper and slowly remove material from the end pin and I stop just at the shoulder. I'll go back in and trim that area again to bring it down to the shoulder the rest of the way. Don't put too much pressure on the end pin pushing it into the peg shaper otherwise it will lock in place and then you'll have to knock it back out and sometimes it will actually split the peg and you will have to restart your trimming process on a new end pin. I will continue this operation until I have the peg for the end pin shaped in a proper manner for insertion. I have now completed shaping the end pin. Now I will set the taper inside the end block which is drilled at a slight upward angle to allow string tension to pull it straight and to help counteract them forces. Insert your tapered reamer into the hole and slightly turn. This process will take about 10 to 15 minutes working slowly so as not to bind inside the hole or deflect the hole from its center. Once you have established the taper, pull the reamer out and clean it out so that you have no more shavings visible on your reamer. Check your hole. Make sure it's not split out in any direction thereby damaging the side material. Reinsert your taper reamer. Sight down the center line of the instrument 
to make sure that you're going in straight and continue the operation. You will have to do this a number of times until you can get the end pin to fit in the tapered hole. When fitting the end pin, you want the end pin to go in with about 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch clearance in between the shoulder and the side material. Test fit the end pin, remove it, and repeat that process until you are at your set depth. I now have the end pin at the proper depth of 1 16th of an inch gap in between the shoulder and the side material. This is to allow, when varnishing the instrument, removal of the end pin and then cleaning out that hole after the varnish is dried so that you have a good contact with the end pin and it's not being held in by the varnish. All right, I'm going to repeat this same process to shape the pegs. Score around the shoulder of the peg and then slowly turn it to size in the peg shaper. Starting with the first peg, test fit in each hole to see which hole you need to start shaping in. You want to use the largest peg first so that all four pegs will end up the same shape. And stop at the shoulder. Repeat this process with the other three pegs in each hole until you have the desired peg shape. As I start the peg box with the taper, I want to leave 18 millimeters in between the outside edge of the peg box and the shoulder of the peg. This is to allow for after varnishing that I can resurface the tapered hole in the peg box and bring it down to 16 to 14 millimeters. So I mark on the peg at 18 millimeters And that pencil line is what I would like to see right on the edge of the taper hole in the side of the peg box. Here you can see it's out just a little bit further than I would like it. So I'll have to ream it just a little bit more. About a full turn with light pressure to get it to go in some more. You do not want to force the peg in, otherwise the taper, as you're forcing it in, may split the peg box. Okay, my mark is just now touching the side of the box. So I'm going to leave that peg there. I will remove it and number it for the string location. I'll repeat this same procedure with the pegs for the E, A, and G strings.